Hello and welcome to that Double D team, I'm D. Today's video is the top 25 games list. Now this is my personal favourite, my most influential, my most played, most hours logged in. Uh, I'm not putting him in a top 25 and a top 5 and a rest. Um, I believe Diggers labelled his 1 to 25 but not in any order. I know JD I think has done his in order including a top 5 from all time. This is part one. My video will be coming up first. Diggers will be second and JD's will finish off the trilogy by uploading his last but not least. Um, to get things started, let me explain how I'm going to do my list. I'm going to break it down via console from the earliest console I played up to the most recent one and I'm going to give you my list of games that I played the most, enjoyed the most, liked the most and spent the most time on. To start things off, I'm just going to throw out there Game Boy and the most hours I played or most fun game I enjoyed on my Game Boy was Tetris. Slightly weird, slightly random choice for maybe for a lot of people but my personality, my nature, my organisation skills, having thick format and OCD like, Tetris was addictive. I, I believe level 12 I think was my memory when it started to get so fast it came down the screen but I logged hours on Tetris on my Game Boy. Speaking of a game that I also logged hours in, hours, days, weeks, months and years it accumulated to would be the game on the PC which originally was Championship Manager and formed into Football Manager's nowadays iteration. I'm not going to select one or the other because I started out in Championship Manager but most recently played Football Manager but this football managing game was epic. Shout out to Mickey, Michael, for hooking me up with this game from like one high one weekend in high school when a little stay over. He's like, oh, I've got this game, football, football manager, championship manager. I think it was the 95, 96 Italian edition. <laughs> Italian Syria, Parma, Juventus, Roma, Milan, AC, Lazio, Fiorentina, Batistuccio. Um, Chevchenko, Del Piero, Zidane, Nesto, Inzaghi <laughs> So many world quality players That's where everyone was back in the early 90s, late 90s Everyone's in the Italian league Because that's where the money and the, the fame was Obviously switched up nowadays to the Premier League With it being money etc But let's move on Championship manager, football manager Having like five of us on a weekend all around the PC spending an hour setting up my team doing all my bids, setting up my scouting, setting up my tactics not pressing continue to the next day until all everyone else had well me, do mine, next one Curtis, next one Michael, next one Kyle, next one KB, next one and just in a rotation we spent hours on that I think one of my most famous status he said mm, be sure to um, make sure you eat food and take sustenance to life and uh, yeah, have you had a shower yet? Because it had logged the amount of time you'd spent on that game and file. <sighs> Obviously Man United, Juve for my teams, but we also did a version where we'd go into the database editor, take over Torquay United, call it St Vincent de Paul, put all of our football team on it from high school and start from Division 3 and build yourself up to you win the Champions League. Epic. I love that game, man. Double salutes. Right, now, onto the consoles for proper. I'm going to start out with the Sega Master System 2. Now, this was my earliest memory of a console, and the game that came with it, which was free, was Alex the Kid. Now, this, it's not amazing or groundbreaking, this game, but the fact that it came free was already an advantage. Then you played it, and you'd only move, but your screen would move, and you'd get up to the boss at the end, it'd be like, And you had to figure out how to beat the boss by playing Sizz Bar, Sizz Bar Brick or Rock, Paper, Lizard no, Rock, Paper, Scissors Sorry, I was thinking of Big Bang Theory where it's Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock <laughs> But yeah, um, Alex the Kid I believe it was Alex the Kid 2 that I had on mine I'm not too sure But I thoroughly enjoyed that game Yeah, I don't think it was a save point as well to be honest So you'd have to remember the order that the baddies would do their Sizzbar bricking 
so that when you came up to him, you didn't lose a life and you can just be like, okay, first move, scissors, second move, paper, final move, brick, and then you can move on. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that game. Another one on the Master System, not on my list, just a special mention, was My Hero. I don't think anyone I've ever met has either heard or played the game, but I had it for the Master System and it was really good. I think some school bully kidnapped your girlfriend and you was going to find her, but along the way, all these goons were trying to stop you by throwing bottles and stuff at you. Yeah, it was it was good, but Alex the Kid, you get my vote. Now we'll move on to the SNES, which ooh, was my probably my, one of my favourite consoles as a child before I obviously got to high school. Because I remember getting this from Dixon's. Now Dixon's is extinct now, you forgot about this. It was like £199.99. pence. Yeah. I always used to say to my brother as well, like, I put in that extra penny. So it's more my console than yours. You know how sibling rivalry is, it? But yeah, so Super Mario Brothers would be on my list, but there was a few. So I'm going to say Super Mario Brothers World. I believe that game with one, two, three. That is definitely on there. Tag teaming up with Luigi. I've, obviously, I've been playing Mario on the NES and knowing that game and throwing the fireballs and the shells and da -da 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 -da, getting the star. Really fun. When you got to team up with your brother and have the advantage, I was always a Luigi guy anyway. Mario was decent, but... Luigi is my guy. This is me, a Luigi. So um, when you got to play that game and you had to team up and doubles and I loved it. I really did love it because obviously we had the adaptations on with Yoshi and a few other people and then I'm going to come on to him in a minute, Donkey Kong. So Mario game introduced to a lot of characters and I really thoroughly enjoyed that, that format of 2D, one level screen, dimension moving along absolutely amazing as i've just mentioned donkey kong is the next one on my list this was a great game i played it on the nes but it was more simplistic once you came onto the snes it came a lot a lot more fun a lot more better especially having to collect was it bananas the actual word no the word spelled out donkey didn't it was it donkey kong so it's been a while uh, it's been a while and you collect all them items which would get you a bonus swing at the end of each level where they were hidden so you had to find them so I was always about instead of just running through the level dead fast and completing it to get onto the next one to complete the game to say hey I've done it I like to meet well, I'm a completionist and a collector so I like getting all the items collecting all the rings collecting all the coins collecting all the achievements and trophies and getting my money's worth for the game so with Donkey Kong that was one of the first ones along with Mario you, like, you jump into them hidden areas and go down them tubes to collect extra stuff and Sonic get a hundred rings to get a life etc. I was always like yep I'm gonna make sure I collect them to get the extra bonus before I complete the level and Donkey Kong fulfilled that need for me. Um, I like the character, like the mechanics of the game, thoroughly enjoyed, deservedly on my list. Now my final SNES game is Aladdin, a Disney cartoon game. But yes, this was awesome. For anyone who did not play this in their childhood on the SNES, you really did miss out. I was amazed by this game because I didn't think it would be that decent. Once you play it for 10, 20, 30 minutes, you are hooked in. You have to ride around on your flying carpet, throwing apples at people. and Yeah, especially because Aladdin is one of my top five, three, five Disney films. Obviously, you've got Lion King, Aladdin, Toy Story. Robin Hood and I'll leave one out there for an extra spot because I always circulate but Aladdin definitely my top five Disney films so it's only right it got an honorable mention in my top 25 games list now moving on to the Sega Mega Drive 2 um, yeah I didn't have a SNES well I didn't have a NES I had a SNES I didn't have a Master System I had a Master System 2 I didn't have a Mega Drive I had a Mega Drive 2 that double D teammate deuces. <laughs> All about the second versions in it. Don't get the original mate. No, no, bugs and errors. Get the second model, the I. So for me, Sega Master System, Sega Mega Drive 2, the game would be Sonic. Original. I know I think Digger and Joel may have number two, uh, Sonic and Tails, Sonic and Knuckles, but for me. The original Sonic, just on your own, going through, collecting the rings, trying to get to the end to beat Robotnik. The game was tough, 
Now, I remember playing this game and finding difficulty in it, but enjoyable difficulty. Not now where you get rope, where you get a pad rage or game rage and you've got to throw your, your control at your TV screen. No, no, no. This was this was fun difficulty, challenging difficulty. And I really thoroughly enjoyed Sonic, especially because around the time, there was a lot of game beef. So it was either you Team Mario or Team Sonic. And that, because I had a SNES and the Mega Drive. I played both, so I wasn't really taking sides, but Mario was probably the better game. But Sonic was one not to be slept on. Really, really good. Moving on now to probably the epicenter of my gaming um, time, and that would be my Nintendo 64. Probably my all time favourite console. Even though the games were £50. And everyone else had a PlayStation 1 and getting their games chipped. I paid 50 quid for my cartridge. Even though to play one of the most greatest games ever perfect out, you have to buy an expansion pack for about 70 quid. Nintendo 64 was still the done. Yeah. Just yeah. I never had a PS1 by the time I was a Nintendo guy, Nintendo 64. I'd played games on the PS1, but that's why none of these are actually going to make my list. So acknowledgements to Crash Bandicoot. Tomb Raider and to Grand Theft and GTA but because I wasn't a PS1 guy I don't feel right putting you on the list even though if it was top games of all time you probably would make it so Nintendo 64 um, hmm, how can I there's always the most the Fab Four I call them on the 64 so I'll leave them till the end and then I'm gonna just pitch off the the outsider and that is Wrestlemania 2000 now, especially in high school, 99, 2000, big, big wrestling fan, WWF, WWE, The Generation X, Stone Cold Stunners, yeah, anyone who went high school with us knows how obsessed we were with wrestling around that time, stunning people in school, calling our little group 316, etc, etc. But I know Revenge came out, and then you had Warzone, and No Mercy, but WrestleMania 2000 for me was my most memorable, especially that black and green covered case on the front he just looked good i do think digger is going to mention one in his list and jd's also got one because we did kind of have a little chit chat before and coming up with our lists so if anyone was mentioning the same game three times we could one of us chose to maybe omit it because the other two would mention it and then choose something different for example wrestlemania 2000 i went for wcw revenge I'm pretty sure Digger went for, and No Mercy was, I think, JD's choice. So all similar types of games, but different version of each for each um, pick of ours. So going on to the Fab Four, as I call it. Now, the pinnacle of this four. Sorry, I just, just let me name the four and get them out of the way, and I'll go in order. So you had The Legend of Zelda, The Ocarina of Time. Perfect Dark, GoldenEye, Mario Kart 64. There's an island, I'd be set with that. But, right, so you have The Legend of Zelda. The pinnacle, probably the greatest Zelda game of all time. I know some of you are playing the most recent Zelda at the moment on the Wii U. I've not played it, so I'm not counting it in my opinion. Ocarina of Time, I got as a Christmas present, I believe from my brother. And I remember Christmas Eve, opening it up, loading it up into my 64 and playing it for an hour to see what it was like because I was so hyped and excited. Especially because this was around the time Games Master magazines were out monthly and I'd be reading them and collecting them and just be like, oh, this game looks good. This game, oh, wow, cannot wait for this. Excitement. So yeah, Christmas Eve, opened it up, put it in, played it for an hour. Gassed. Wrap it back up, wait for Christmas morning. Christmas morning, played it. Now around this time, I think we were all in year 7 in high school, 7, 8, and I think everyone had the game. Everyone in the main clique, like the 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of us. So there was a slight little race on to see who could complete it first, and who not. Hold tight, Jose. I'm pretty sure you were number 1 fam. Closely followed by either me or Shino. Mickey, I know you got stuck on the water temple and then just gave up. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I don't mean to name and shame you bro, because yeah, I remember actually coming around to try and help you on it, but you, you, you did something random on that level that was just unfixable, and I don't think you wanted to go back and start again, so you just gave up, but that game was epic. 
I remember me and KB especially they're trying to just work work on it and complete it and then go to school about it the next day, chat where you up to, what do you do, how did you get past this guy, what technique did you use? Legend of Zelda OOT. Epic. Perfect dark. Wow. This was the next franchise game from Rare. Now after they've already given you GoldenEye, this was something that we were looking forward to. Brand whole new storyline. Female protagonist lead. Like, whoa, you got an agent, female agent, that's really good, and she's handling all this. Then the weapons you gave you, like the level of the futuristic tech, the laptop weapon, gun. You got a gun, it's a laptop, boom, throw it on a wall, go and hide. Multiplayer, some guy comes near you in the area, laptop weapon takes him out, or at least injures and takes him down enough health from him for you, so that you can just pop out the corner and finish him off. I loved Perfect Dark. The story as well was really good because I'm not one of these guys that decides to buy a game for multiplayer, i.e. all you COD guys out there. I mean, how many COD players actually complete the storyline? Exactly. You go straight into story, you go straight into multiplayer storyline as soon as you buy the game and you've literally spent 70 quid on a game and multi and multi packs just to play online multiplayer when the guy who created the game created it for a character and a story and an arc and yeah. Be appreciative. So for me, Perfect Dark, I really enjoyed, especially because it came off of GoldenEye's success. GoldenEye, James Bond, the film, Pierce Brosnan, the game, the multiplayer, the levels, the weapons, the RCP-90, the PP-7, the Dustable, the Golden Gun, the Moonraker laser. The format of how the levels were laid out, and you have to complete them all on easy to get level 16, and you have to complete them all on medium to get level 17 then you have to complete it all on hard to get 18 oh i absolutely loved golden eye yeah it was brilliant so what i'm going to say now is um the final one of these fab four was mario kart mario kart was epic really was you'd have say four of us around on a 64 all playing that after doing a rotation of golden eye and perfect dark and mario kart you'd have like maybe a fifth or sixth member both chilling on the pc playing football manager so that's championship manager waiting for their turn to come on the 64 to play mario kart after whoever finished last on the lap the yoshi level that was shaped like yoshi all the little shortcuts being in last position and having a blue shell on the final lap and then getting all the best little boxes because you're in the worst position so you'd have like the golden mushroom to go and catch up the three red shells having three greens around you just as protection like bodyguard where where do i end the game was absolutely awesome awesome as i said there's an island you need some games or a console nintendo 64 zelda golden eye perfect arc Mario Kart 64 and I am happy. Throw in my fifth choice if I got something in 2000 as well if I was stuck with someone else or I just want to do career mode and yeah that is me perfectly done. What I'd um, be moving on to now that's 64 gone my epic franchise gaming um, period next Nintendo console was the GameCube. GameCube had a good few games on here as well and um, I would like to mention the 007 franchises or like Night night fire and or agent under fire and night ooh, i can't actually remember what the 007 game but it wasn't the same as what, what we had on the 64 from rare because this is now taken over by ea still enjoyable but not as which why it didn't make my list what did however surprisingly for me was star fox dinosaur planet i'm not a fan of flying games i've never played a star fox game in the past as well like lilac wars on the 64 but this became RPG, and you had this, the main characters from Star Fox doing um, role playing, f playing games on a planet, having to collect stuff, build stuff, figure out clues or a mystery to solve something to move on to the next area. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think only Pro, I was like Pro, was um, only one of the other guys that maybe had the game or played the game with me. Um, so it wasn't one of the, the most popular gaming franchises that we all had as, um, as teens. But one that I really, really enjoyed. The next one on my GameCube franchise will be probably my most favourite GameCube game. I, I also played it on the PS2 as well, but I logged the most hours in on it on the GameCube would be Time Splitters 2. 
Now, I'm not going to go too deep into this because I'm pretty sure Digger has this on his list because me and Digger put in hours completing it on normal, on easy, on medium, on hard, getting all the achievements, getting all the high top scores, everything. The monkey level where you have to try and uh, get all the monkeys, shoot all the monkeys, those challenges kept us online persistently. So yeah, time split is two. Time split is one was good, but two when the challenges came in and the chasing of the monkeys and definitely on my list, deservedly mentioned. Um, PlayStation 2. Um, I've not got many on this list. Now, just obviously, you know, all know I'm a Nintendo guy, but PlayStation 2, I did have for a good year or two and I logged in hours on these games, but a lot of the games I played on my PlayStation 2, I also played on my 360 prior to getting my PlayStation 2, so they'll be safe for that list. But PlayStation 2 games, I'm going to mention Lord of the Rings. Hold tight, my brother-in-law Joe, I'm pretty sure he put me onto this, um, and I, I played this in tag team tandem with Pro, because it was a double player, like split screen game mode, and this was around the time I just finished probably watching either the first, second, or maybe the trilogy of the films. Hold tight, Mickey, for putting me onto it. And once again, just getting a character, racking up the points to level him up, then move on to our next character, rack up all the points and kills to level him up. So by the time before you finish the game, you'd have every character maxed out at the highest level with all the perks available so you could just breeze through. Whilst going through the game as well, because it was split screen and you're trying to level up. There'd also be a bit of competitive elements into it. So when Pro, Pro was playing with me, and he's Aragon and I'm Legolas, we both got individual scores on our screen. So you know, we're both footballers, we're both ballers, we're both competitive. So I'd be looking at his corner like, ooh, I'm, there's a thousand points ahead of me. Let me sign, bust up a few more, man. Let me get Legolas's triple arrow throw and kill three at a time and stuff like that. So yeah, so... It'd be nice competitive elements. We weren't going against each other in the game. We were working together, but we were kind of working together so well because we were trying to get the highest score between us with a competitive battle. So yeah, I had really fun times playing Lord of the Rings game. Um, it may have only been a six month period before we completed it and totally mastered it, which is not the same amount of time as I put into any of the 64 games, but it was memorable. Um, Maybe influential, but yeah, especially because like me and Pro played that consistently. The double team, the upgrading of the characters, the leveling up. Yeah, hold tight. My brother in law Joe as well, man, for, for getting me onto that. And the second final game for PlayStation 2 is, shocking, my first ever experience of Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas. I know, I know, I know. But... I never had a PlayStation 1, so I never really got into the GTA franchise. So when it became available for Xbox 360, which I played on as well, and also the PS2, I went back and bought Vice City and all the other previous GTA entitlements, Liberty City, and I completed both of them on my PlayStation 2. But San Andreas was my first introduction. It's where you had your own character, you had to go give him food and take him training to keep him muscly and wealthy and healthy and you had to get your dri driver's license, your motorcycle license, your aeroplane license. They probably did so much in this game, it was probably too much for you to do. And then they fixed that by narrowing it down to the essentials in 4. And GTA 4 with Nico probably would. Maybe 5 as well with a triple threat, especially with Trevor. Should, should and could have made my list. But because it, San Andreas was my first introduction um, into the franchise, I had to mention that. Although the GTA franchise gets an honourable mention on my list, but if I had to mention one out of the five, GTA San Andreas for me. Now, moving on to, obviously Nintendo 64 is my all-time franchise gaming console selection of games ever. But, just after that rung, you've got 360 and PlayStation 2. That that seen me through just after, them, them years after college, I put in hours on some of these games on these consoles ps2 and 360 so speaking of the 360 first up i want to mention bioshock 1. bioshock 2 was epic as well don't get me wrong big daddies little sisters but bioshock 1 i played the demo 
and I didn't complete the demo because I was so awestruck and amazed five minutes into it that I turned it off. I thought I'm not completing the demo because then I'm just going to be thirsty and fiending for the game when it gets released. So by just turning it off, by having a taste on and getting excited for it, it allowed me to quell that anticipation until the game was released. And when it was, I went in. Because it being a solo game, just come home from work or school or college, settle down in for the night and plow. And me, I'm an explorer, I'm a collector. So I was going around each corner on all of the maps, collecting all my stuff to level up and get get my plasma weapons to upgrade my suit and the storyline as well. Really cool to say like a futuristic world and uh, anyone who's not played that game, please get onto that game. I was lucky enough to get the Game of the Year edition when I played it and thoroughly enjoyed it. What a game, what a story. Next on the list is Assassin's Creed. Now I'm gonna put one out here in the desert because it's the originator. First time man, I, I was able to um, dive off buildings and get my <coughs> right into a guy's neck with his blade under his. It was so good, stealth molding into people, learning the fighting styles and combats, blending in and escaping, planning your route to go and kill a target and then get out without being seen. This was next level. Now, Ezio's storyline is my favourite of the Assassin's Creed franchises and I do want to put an honourable mention to it. Um, I kind of tailed off just before Black Flag and, and all the rest, so I do want to say the Assassin's Creed franchise, but number one was the originator for me. It's what got me into it, got me liking it and then made me play on but two and onwards, especially Brotherhood, like it's Ezio's storyline. Yeah, probably better, but for me, personal preference, Assassin's Creed 1. Dead Rising 1, Xbox 360 game as well. This, a lot of people like zombie games and killing games and stuff like this, but for me, I know people have left for Dead and other versions, Borderlands. Dead Rising for me was amazing. I, I'm unsure whether to put one or two, so I'm going to say two, because I know a lot of my previous games have been I've seen the originals. So with number two, this gave you the opportunity to upgrade and improve and combine weapons together for you to do which I really enjoyed you ever start putting together like a water gun with a flamethrower yeah or putting a chainsaw on a motorbike wow so two gets a shout out obviously one as well one for me when I first played it was around the time on the 360 you could upload music into your hard drive so I had Jay-Z's Kingdom Come album playing just on repeat whilst I was down on, on Dead Rising, going down in the garage, just mowing down, killing like a thousand zombies at a time, jumping out for it to reset, come back in, and doing the same again. All to get my achievement of killing like 55,000 zombies. But yeah, I'd be mowing them down, and in the background you just hear Jay-Z like, dig a hole, bury yourself, mm -mm -mm. or Beach Chair, or any of the other bangers from that Kingdom Come album. So Dead Rising 1, 2, both of y'all get a mention together on my 360 list. Along with, now, I mentioned GTA before. Uh, GTA were obviously made by the legendary Rockstar. And Rockstar also made Red Dead Redemption. John Marston. Now I played this and I loved it. Because I was thinking, mm, Western, roaming around the land in Rome. I don't know. Half an hour, an hour into it, I was hooked. And then, yeah, this is the type of game, as soon as you come home from college, come on, log on, play till like 3 a.m., log off, rinse, repeat. You know how we do with the t-shirt. And then once you completed it, you got the zombie mode, Undead Red Dead Redemption, or Red Undead Redemption. Bonus, DLC modes, everything for me. From the creators of um, GTA, Rockstar, they know how to write a story make a game realistic, hook you into it and make you put hours and hours and emotion and feelings and <sighs> Red Dead Redemption, well done. Number two should be out 2018 this year. Now I've not been playing a lot of gaming recently but that is definitely going to get me back into the swing of things along with hopefully whenever they make GTA 6. Staying with a Rockstar variation I'm going for L.A. Noir. 
obviously L A alongside Ardrick. <laughs> but yeah, sixties noir detective thriller criminal detective game. I ate that shit up. Nom 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 nom. Yeah, I had this as one of my chipped games on my PS, well my three sixty, and it came in like a two three D C D deck. This was also one of the, one of the first games on my 360 I completed 100%, getting all them achievements, completing all the levels, finding every achievement you want me to do, like kind of find this killer, find this piece of evidence, etc. And I really loved it. I've got hopes and expectations that they actually do another one, maybe in the 80s, GTA feel, but detective and crime drama, hopefully another L.A. Noir or New York Noir, NY Noir. Definitely. Please, Rockstar, give me something like that. I know you're focusing mainly on Red Dead GTA, but don't forget about your, your third one in that trilogy, in that trifecta. L.A. was epic. I know Ricky played that game, so hold tight, Ricky, if you're watching, man. Nice one. I know me and you had a nice few conversations discussing when we were playing these levels and thoroughly enjoyed the game. Batman Arkham Asylum. Now, this on the 360 was... I'm, I'm, I'm more of a Marvel guy than a DC. Obviously, I do like Batman, but you're thinking, okay, what can Batman do in a game? Then you get to see the detective elements of him going around and then your mobility and travelling and grappling around the city and getting around certain areas with your grapple hook. And This game was good, but for me, it was the fighting techniques and button configuration. It was so unique and epic. Like, being able to get your 100 hit combo on someone when you're fighting in a group of around 8 people. The 100 hit combo is an actual achievement for you to get, so you know I was after that. So trying to figure out when to use your batarang, when to put smoke down on the floor, not to go for a major hit or kill. So you can keep up your combo rising and rising. I absolutely love this. Um, I know there was other variations that I've been at since, but as mentioned, Asylum is the first one that got me into the franchise, so it's the one I'm going to have to mention as um, going on my top 25 list. I've also got on there Tiger Woods Golf. I believe this was the 07, 08 version. Don't know how I got it. I think it was because I did have a chipped Xbox 36 there, and it was just probably one of the games on my list. Well, one of the games that was available from my supplier that gave it to me. Um, played it. Enjoyed it, got addicted to it because it became good. So then mastering it and moving on to certain stages, winning cups, winning achievements, having the lads round, taking it in turns to see who was the better golfer, who can get the, the lowest score. Competitive and fun. Similar to an another unroll mention which could have been on the list, uh, WTA tennis, World Tour tennis. We logged in hours on that, unlocking like the Australian Open, the US Open, Wimbledon, playing on grass, playing on clay playing on gravel, all these courts, yeah, it was absolutely really fun, especially because you can play two player, so a couple of pads, a couple of lads playing it, reminded me of like international track and field when you used to button bash to jump over the hurdles and run fast, yeah, another sporting type of game that I loved a lot of time in into, but if I had to put one on the pick, it would be Tiger Woods Golf, especially because prior to this, I just had my week and where you had to get you play your Wii Golf with the actual sticks and that and you could play tennis and other games but the golf one I was really good at for some reason technique and yeah so when Tiger Woods Golf became an option available for me to play on a 360 and I had the game available played it, liked it, enjoyed it, beat it now the final game for my Xbox 360 franchise is the game of the Xbox franchise Xbox 360, Xbox One. When you think of Nintendo, you think of Mario. You think of Sega. You think of Sonic. You think of Nin sorry, PlayStation. Lara, Crash Bandicoot, GTA. Yeah, figurehead. Now for Xbox, you think of Marcus Phoenix from Gears of War. Full tight JD for coming up with this t-shirt from my last B-Day gift. Obviously we went to the Gears of War event a few years ago, got to play it early. And we also um, recently completed G Gears of War 4 together online on the Xbox One. 
For me, I'm going to mention the whole Gears franchise because I'm a massive fan. Now, that is my franchise. Other people play COD, Black Ops, Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare 3, pretty decent, whole type. But for me, Gears of War. And when I say G-O-W, if you say God of War, backhand. No, that's not right. G-O-W is for Gears. Now, Gears 1, epic. And this is what's made my list. But two introduced the Horde. Now Horde is probably my most favourite sub-game activity on many a console. The fact you just have to plant yourself in a spot, get all your equipment and munitions together, get your team, get your communications, and then hold out to be an oncoming onslaught of enemies. Just continuously for a specific amount of time and waves. Epic. I so loved that franchise and that mode. Then you had Brotherhood and you had the Brothers Till the End with Dom and Marcus. You had Judgment where they introduced the new class types, something similar but different to Horde. And then Gears of War 4, the reinvigoration of the franchise, carrying it on with the new younger generation of, um, is it Dell? Uh, Marcus's young boy as well. So yeah, Gears of War makes my list. I had to save it to, to the end of my 360 list because I didn't want to say, oh, here's my 360 list, Gears 1, and then list off about another 5, 6 games. I want you to pay attention to the fact I mentioned Gears of War. Now, PS4, the most up-to-date console I've been playing, so there's not many on the list, but two definitive mentions. First of one, hold tight Naughty Dog for producing Last of Us. Hold tight Mickey for getting me onto this game again as he did with Splinter Cell which also almost made the list. But Last of Us, the storytelling of this game, the DLC, I didn't really get too much into multiplayer with the rest of the lads because whilst they were completed the game and online playing multiplayer I was midway through completing my story mode and then completing the extra story mode DLC and I didn't want to jump into multiplayer until I completed everything and got the dynamics and systems right. But Last of Us, it's one of those, like I said, top five games, maybe you Naughty Dog Rockstar, rare. Those, yeah, those gaming production companies for me. If you gave me Legend of Zelda, you gave me Last of Us, Red Dead Redemption and GTA. Five, and say a Bioshock or, a, or a, maybe a multiplayer such as GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, Perfect Dark, Mario Kart, Time Splitters. Yeah, I would say like my top five list would be, be hard. JD, <laughs> I don't know how you managed to put yours into a top five list because for me, I've got, I just keep constantly changing. But Last of Us definitely a top ten, so it had to be an honourable mention in my top twenty five. My final one, which I'm going to close the video out with, is the, probably the game I spent the most time on last year to the year before, and that was Destiny. The raids of Destiny was something next level and unique, um, and just changed the game for a lot of online gaming players like ourselves with um, online communication, getting your six man together on a, on a Friday night every night to step together to go and complete a raid so you can get better um, rewards and um, prizes for completing it which would then give you armour or weapons to upgrade you to become a higher level light so you can reach that maximum cap level. Yeah, it was, it was really good. MMO slash RPG slash free world exploration or if you want, you can just spend time doing strikes on your playlist, or just do raids, or prison of elders. Just do multiplayer if you want, go into the crucible, whatever game mode you want. Obviously for me, it's control. But Destiny got me back into gaming, I'd say in late 16, early 17. Uh, when Destiny 1 finished, I was hyped for Destiny 2 played Destiny 2 but didn't feel the same passion and invigoration for the original franchise plus a lot of um, the original raid squad dispersed so yeah so one of the 
was probably one of the only couple of original members of ODT still left around. Everyone else wanted to join other clans just so they could level up and rank up faster. Fair play to him, that's how they want. But me, you know me, loyal to a core mate. It's all about being prideful and part of a team, the original team. So Destiny definitely makes my list. It was one of the most recent games I've had the most fun time and enjoyment with. I may get back into two eventually, but we'll see. We'll see. For now though, Destiny 1 definitely made my list and that finishes off my top 25 games list of all time. This, as I mentioned, is only part one. Please click the next video to go see Digger's version in part two and then JD's virtue will be uploaded as part three once it's all been done, uploaded and recorded. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know your feelings on my 25 Digger's 25, JD's 25 in the comments section below. Hit us all up on Twitter or off Facebook. It's free to join. We're not going to exclude anyone from the group. And if you want a message or send any comments and requests to us of what to do, any more team challenges, TV shows, film reviews, trailer reviews, feel free to let us know by sending a message. Till next time, peace.